is true, I am a nerd. But this nerd is going to change the world through the power of science and technology, and I'm here to talk about it. In my career, I never thought that I was going to study oil and gas. Instead, I went to school, and I studied pre-med. And while at school, I accidentally made software for a Fortune 200 pharmaceutical company. After this, I actually got the role as the chief information technology officer of a large growing oil and gas firm. I focused our research and development on systems for hydrostatic pressure testing, robotics, and big analytical databases. I was then offered a second role as the chief information technology officer of a second oil and gas firm, where we were using Internet of Things technology and embedding these in high-pressure assets called fluid ends. I co-founded my own firm where we were doing big data analytics for government and large corporations to break this information up into usable sizes. And today, what we're doing is I'm combining all this experience uh, with my co-founder, and we are using IoT and artificial intelligence to predict pipeline leaks before they happen. I'm so sorry. So when I tell people about my uh, career in oil and gas, most people think that this comes with fast cars, big checking counts, and hatred for the environment. What they don't realize is that this Eagle Scout and lover of petroleum is actually an av environmentalist. And so with that in mind, I asked 70 people in my network what their thoughts and feelings were on oil and gas, and the results were kind of disturbing. So what we found is that thir over 30% immediately thought of what oil and gas is, a fuel or an energy. However, a lot of people brought up concerns about envir the environment, fracking, money, politics, corruption, you name it, they said it. To put this simpler, 53% immediately thought of negative things when confronted with oil and gas. This is actually in stark contrast with the 2016 uh, energy production report produced by the EIA, which states that 61% of our energy produced in this country is from either oil or natural gas. And study after study has actually shown that uh, cheap and reliable access to uh, energy is what drives innovation and drives uh, civilization's development. So that's why I've developed uh, my career to focus on one of the largest problems in oil and gas, and that's pipeline leaks. Before I address any problem, I like to know the numbers, and the numbers really speak to me as kind of a geek, right? And so what you find is that there's 2.5 million miles of pipeline in this country, nearly 2.6 million miles. You divide that by the few hundred state inspectors, the few hundred federal inspectors, and what you get is that there's over 4,500 miles of pipeline between each inspector. You're starting to see the problem. We then multiply this by the average pipeline leak per company being about 93, and the average leak costing over $200,000. That means that each company is hemorrhaging over 18 million, nearly 19 million dollars annually. This leads to a 30 billion dollar loss in revenue for these companies. So with this, you can kind of take away two points. One, there's money to be made, and that's great news for a startup like us, and investors love it too. But two, the problem is growing. We're seeing it time and time again in the news, right? And the reason why it's growing is actually threefold. One, the average age of pipelines in this country is over 50 years old. Two, the current ways of monitoring these pipelines are archaic and antiquated. And three, we are actually expanding our pipeline network by two to 5,000 miles every single year. So we need this infrastructure, it is growing, and this problem is only going to get worse. So it needs to be stopped now. So for a, a data nerd like me, the solution becomes pretty obvious, and that's simply technology. Before I address any problem, you know, once again, we go back to the numbers. And what we find is that the majority share of pipeline leaks are actually caused by corrosion, 61%. Meanwhile, human error, and whether that's opera error or third-party damage, is 12%. Uh, component failure, safety systems, earthquakes, earth movement, those take up a large percentage as well. However, the part of this that should worry us is the 14% that is from uh, unknown or miscellaneous that was reported to us. The good news, however, is through our studies, what we found is that 100% of pipeline leaks are preventable. Accidents do not just happen. Likewise, we should not let oil and gas pipeline leaks just happen. For this multivariable problem, we need a multivariable solution. 
So what my co-founder and I have created is a data acquisition device that's primarily based on our Internet of Things uh, technology. What this means is that we read a variety of variables 42 times a second, and these variables are the most important variables to pipeline longevity. We then take this information that we acquired actually from the outside of the pipeline, so that means no tapping into the pipeline, creating a structural defect, creating a leak effectively. We can acquire all this data external from the pipeline, and we send this data through 4G LTE networks to a cloud computing cluster. We then analyze that data time and time again through artificial intelligence methodology called neural networks. And with this information in mathematics, thank you, Mom, for your PhD. Um, with this information in uh, the mathematics, we uh, were able to really draw some incredible solutions out of this. And so this is a real-world example of a data feed through our preliminary test results. And I like this because humans can clearly see what happened, right? Oops, ouch, we just got a hit. So we can sit here and ask ourselves, well, what actually happened? How could we have prevented this? Except we would be looking at this probably days after the event uh, with current solutions. Mixing this with, with our artificial intelligence, we're able to really make this data speak. What we were able to find is that we could predict this incident three seconds before it happened. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot, but remember, this is an impact-based event. What it means is that if you were sitting at a bar, you would know the guy beside you at the bar was going to punch you three seconds before he did. You can move out of the way. Likewise, pipeline companies can address this issue and move out of the way. So with all the data and geek talk aside, what this means is that we can solve these pipeline leaks with a projected 96% accuracy before they happen. We want to become the missing link in energy. Energy is an outdated industry. We want to bridge the oil and gas world of yesterday and the green energy of the future. And because oil and gas is going to be with us for the next 50 to 100 years, we need to find a way to make this oil and gas not be a burden to our society. That means not a danger. That means not an environmental hazard. We need to solve this now. Through our technology set, we can do this. What I want to challenge each of you today is I want you to challenge the status quo. If you challenge the status quo, you can change the world. I read a statistic recently that said over 50% of millennials would refuse an oil and gas job because of the stigma that's associated with it. Why is that? This is an industry that desperately needs new minds, losers and geeks like me, to really get involved and use their intelligence and use their fresh thinking to address these problems. And oil and gas isn't the only one. You have trucking, you have you know, politics, you have all this that need reformation. So I want to challenge each of you to accept that job, accept that job that might have a stigma attached to it, and change what it is. Thank you so much.